Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Psychology Network, your one-stop solution to all your psychology exams. So today's topic which we would be studying is reliability. It is a topic under psychological testing. Let's uh, start with the definition of reliability. So reliability refers to the consistency of scores obtained by the same people when re-examined with the same test on different occasions or with different sets of equivalent items or under other variable examining conditions. This definition is something you have to write it down because even in the good books which I've seen and thousands of students are studying from it, the definition is wrong. This definition is from Anastasi. I'll explain you what reliability means. Suppose there is a person and there is a test. He does a test. He, do, he did the test and he got the score of 8. Suppose there are other people as well. On day 5th August 2021, they did test. Like this, there are other 50 people. 50 people did this test A and everybody got different scores 8 maybe this person got 9 this person got 22 everybody got different scores fine on 5th August 2022 they these same group of people take the same test again test A same test and if this person got 8 here and is getting 8 here also one year later this person got 9 here also he's getting 9 this person got 22 here also he's getting 2 this means the test A is reliable this means the test A is reliable because even after a year the scores haven't changed right this is what it's written even in the Definition, the same test re-examined and consistency of the scores. Before moving on to different types of reliability, we must understand few concepts. One of those few concepts is the reliability co coefficient. Now, reliability coefficient is basically a part of correlation coefficient which expresses the degree of correspondence or relationship between two sets of score it just means if there are 60 scores here 60 scores here the interrelationship uh, between them would give a score from 0 to plus 1 nearer to plus 1 means higher co correlation coefficient and a better uh, relationship and nearer to zero would mean not so strong relationship. This is one thing you must keep in mind. And the other thing you must keep in mind is error variance. We do not want error variance. I have explained the concept of error variance very properly in max, min, con principle video. Please go check that out. And error variance is something we do not want. In social science, when we deal with humans, we are doing experiment with humans humans tend to have a lot of certain aspects which result in er error variance maybe the personality maybe uh, that day he wasn't feeling very nice maybe he went before coming to the examination hall uh, he met with a very small accident leading to a bad mood so many things can lead to error variance but we do not want error variance we want systematic variance the variance which is telling us how much the test is uh, working so-called so we want that we do not want that but unfortunately we would face error variance so please keep in mind the concept of error variance let's go to test retest reliability don't freak out this is a lot of words but this these words are for you to stop the video when i complete my explanation stop the video and read each line and see if you understand i'm going to explain the retest test reliability here suppose 50 people did one test three months ago three months later 
50 people do the same test get there was a certain score and they get the same score even three months later this is test retest reliability very easy because after three months if the scores of those 50 people are not matching if here for some person was three here it's six some for some person it was eight but here is 20 how is that happening the test is not changing so why are the scores changing if the scores are changing it means it's the test is not reliable if the scores are nearer to each other not changing preferably then the test is reliable moving to the second one is the alternate form rela reliability again when I complete my explanation, I'm going to pause the video and read what is written. I'll explain here what it means. For suppose intelligence test, there are two identical forms, form M and form T. And they have identical subtests. So, suppose a group of people are given form M and what is it saying? The same person can thus be tested with one form on the first occasion and with another comparable form on the second. Here, in the second trial, they were given the same form. But here, in the first trial, they were given form M. And in the second trial, they were given form P. So why was this happening? Very simple. Suppose somebody three months before uh, in the form A, suppose uh, something in mathematics, 2 plus 8 is 10. And he remembers the sum. And when he is given again the form M, after three months, he remembers this sum and he writes 10. That is not showing his ability. That is showing that he can remember. He did not do the calculation of 2 plus 8 equals to 10. Maybe the first time it was wrong and in the second time it's right. So if he remembers the question, questions basically, it's going to be a problem. So an identical form, what it does is that it is actually testing the ability on intelligence. Because here I've given the example of it, intelligence. Suppose instead of 2 plus 8, here they ask 3 plus 7. So he has to apply the mechanism of addition and do 3 plus 7 and then get the answer. Not just by repetition, he's just writing the answer. And it's identical. The difficulty level is same. Next coming to split half reliability. So the split half reliability is determined by dividing the total set of items into two halves, odd or even. Suppose there are 20 items, they are divided into two, odd and even halves. And then they are comparing the results obtained from two subsets of items thus created. It is apparent that split half reliability provides a measure of consistency with regard to content sampling. Temporal stability of the scores do not enter into such reliability. Those you don't have to understand, but you just understand that in split half technique, one test you need one test and it's divided into two parts odd and even moving on to kuda richardson reliability what are they saying before getting into all these three listen to what i'm saying is that kuda richardson did a series of research okay so they had some of the difficulties with the split half method estimating about the reliability what they were saying that there is one test suppose there is one test again i'm going to be taking intelligence test and they're splitting it suppose so they, they split it okay could richardson, richardson what they are saying that when you are splitting it it might be this part has language plus visuospatial rotation. Suppose these are the two sub items here. And 
here it's maths plus creativity. I'm just seeing two things. So in the split half method, in the first, uh, when somebody is given, uh, suppose person A is given this one and person B is given this one. And oh, sorry, the same person for the first time is given this one. And then the second time it's given this one. How would you know that the score of 80 in here and the score of 110, 20, suppose? The 80, suppose language was 20 and visual spatial rotation was the other 60. And here 120 was 60 plus 60. So how would you compare between these two? This was the um, complaint criticism of Koda Jitsun. They're saying it's heterogeneous. But that would lead to so many problems. So what they said that the two forms should be homogeneous. So they came out with certain formulas like K20, K21, the better refurbished one. So they said to use the KR formulas, there are some requirements which has to be followed. The first one, all the items of the test should be homogeneous. That is, each item should measure the same factor of factors in the same proportion. In other words, the test should be inter-item, should have inter-item consistency which would be, of course, related, uh, indicated by the inter-item correlation. The second, item should be scored either plus 1 or 0. Plus 1 right, 0 wrong. No other form of uh, scoring would be there. Items should not vary much in the indices of difficulty, even if, suppose, there are two forms of maths. Here, you are giving 2 plus 2 kind of difficulty but here you're giving calculus it's not possible you have to give two same kind of difficulties should be given so this was your kr reliability next next this is a recap this is important testing sessions required test forms required so split half and kr scorer they would require only one session and one form test tree test would require two sessions but one form because it's doing with the same form alternate form immediately if you are going to take two forms and doing it immediately then it would take one session and two forms if you're doing it in two separate sessions two forms and two sessions i talked about error variance remember so what kind of error variance might come up so these reliability which i just talked about they're not perfect okay so there might be some kind of error variance there so what kind of error variance each type of re uh, reliability might have suppose like the test retest one might have the time sampling as an error variance alternate form might again have time sampling and content sampling alternate form might have content sampling these could be the error variance what is scorer reliability scorer reliability suppose in certain personality tests uh, like Rorschach or TAT and certain so what in such cases when so much is dependent on the scorer so how would you understand if the scorer is giving um, almost what the test needs how would we know if there is not a lot of error variance so this is done by independently getting scored by two examiners and then what would be done the scores obtained from two examinee would be correlated in the in the normal way how it's done and the correlation coefficient would be would be the measure of scorer reliability the scorer reliability can be done with the other reliabilities as well so this was all you have to know about reliability if you if you see into any book there is much more given but as i say ugc net does not go into so much of details maybe you can talk about the uh, kr formulas but other than that ugc does not go into so much of details ugc just wants you to understand the basic and a little bit more not maybe not just definition of reliability but the types of reliability and their concepts so this lecture 
the small lecture on reliability is exactly what you need for UGC net exam. So thank you so much for listening and do subscribe to the channel Psychology Network, your one-stop solution for all your psychology exams. Thank you and do like and subscribe to the channel.